something from God's heart that God gave me this past day, fat past few days. Uh, the whole world knows what is happening here in the United States. We're in a worst crisis in our history. Uh, and the people everywhere, especially in New York City, where the cr crisis hangs so heavy overheads, there's a great fear. I was told that in the stock market after it closes, uh, men are collapsing and falling down in fear. And it's not just an American problem. It's a European problem. It's worldwide. God is doing what he warned us he would do when sins have mounted up into heaven. And that's that he would shake everything that can be shaken. And the whole world is shaking now with an economic meltdown. And it's going to get so frightening that not one of us will be unaffected. We're all going to be affected. Every minister, every family, Christians and unbelievers alike. We're all going to feel and see things that are terrifying. And many are going to have their faith shaken. Many are going to abandon their faith. Even when Jesus walked the earth, when hard message came, when hard times came, and he saw many leave him. He said, many, the Bible says, many forsook him. And he turned to his disciples and he said, will you forsake me also? Now, everywhere I go, I hear people saying, is there a word? What's going to happen next? What is God saying? And I want you to know what I believe God's speaking to my own heart, especially last night I was walking and talking with him. I went to the word of God because the only word is from the word itself, from God. There's no economist, there's no evangelist, there's no one that can give us the answers. We have to go to the word, we have to go to the Father. And in 1 Samuel, 30th chapter, I was, I was moved by the story of David and his 600-man army. They came upon over the hill toward Ziklag, their home base. And it was in ruins. The f fire had destroyed the city. His wives, all the wives, the children were all taken captive by the Amalekites. And the Bible says that David and his men wept. David was deeply distressed. And his men wept all day and probably through most of the night until they said there were no more tears. Now, let me tell you that you and I, the godliest person here in my voice, I don't care how famous you may be. I don't care who you may be. When you first see these frightening things come on the earth, there will be that first flash of fear and terror. I picked up one of our national magazines this a few days ago, and it had a picture of the world, a man representing the world on the brink of falling into a chasm. And it said, the headlines were, the world is collapsing. And it's in the headlines, a great worldwide depression. And the first impact, when I read that, I had a trembling inside. I said, God, so quick, so sudden, how did this happen? Even though many of us prophesied about it for years. And when it comes and you see it, it's so overwhelming. And David, the Bible said, now, now let, me, let me say this. If, if you were to say, I'm not afraid, then you really don't understand the situation. It's that first flash of fear. There's a time for weeping. And God understands that. And many of you listening to me now, the question is, where does this end? Where does it take it? What about the church and its future? Bible says David wept until there was no tears left. But then came a time, there comes a time, there is a time for weeping, there is a time that we will tremble. But God understands that. Then there comes a time to fight. David stood up, no more questions. And the Bible said he encouraged himself in the Lord. 
And we have come to a time where every man, every woman, has to get their own word from God. You can't get it from some great voice. You can't get it from someone you think is holier than you. You have to get alone with God. David got alone, and the Bible said he encouraged himself. And you'll hear the voices. But you have to get your own word as David did. I have to get my own word. I have to shut myself in with God and with this book and let the Lord speak encouragement to me. Folks, it doesn't matter who prophesied what and when. That's all in the past. It doesn't matter. And you'll hear a lot of prophetic voices saying uh, good days are just ahead. No. We're in that time now that Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Hosea, and all the prophets said the day of God's vengeance and recompense upon the wicked. But the prophet Isaiah said, but you are safe. This is not about God's people now, even though he's purging his church. This is about having a word from God. If you're a pastor, your congregation, like our congregation, coming to church in every service, what is God saying? What is the word? Now, David had 600 men that couldn't get a word. They didn't know how. But there are those who have walked with Jesus and know that the answer is here. And they have to come to the people now with a word of hope, a word of encouragement. David had the priest Abiathar. Abiathar couldn't help him. He had wise men, some of the wisest men in the world in his little army. They couldn't help him. Comes a time nobody can help you. Nobody give you a word. But David said to Abiathar, bring me the ephod. God spoke through the ephod in those days. And he got a word from the Lord, not from a pastor, not from anyone else. But he got a word of encouragement. God said, yes, I'm going to bring you through. There's going to be a recovery. You're going to know my hand for protection. Now, either this word is true, and I, I was walking, with, and I'm going to close in just a moment, but I don't want to take a lot of your time. I was walking with the Lord last night, and the Lord said, uh, David, you've, you've preached for 55 years around the world about how God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt and through the Red Sea, and about... Uh, the fiery furnace and Hebrew children being delivered. You talk about Daniel being delivered from the lion's den. You talk about all these deliverance for 55 years. Now you're facing a test of faith like you've never known it. Was that mockery? Did you as a minister of the gospel say all this for 55 years and now it doesn't work for you? And, and I began to see that the mockers and the scoffers that are coming in the last days will come some many from the church itself scoffing at the word giving up on the word because they they are they they don't turn to god they get bitter against god and that's going to happen but where are those davids that will stand up with the word of god and they've been tested i have been tested i've been tested in my family cancer uh, all kinds of attacks out of hell but now God is at work. God is, this is God's doing. And by, I believe the Bible says God has everything under control. They, these, God said, don't mock me now. Don't scoff at my word. Stand. I've given you this word. God is going to see his church through. I hear people say, well, we're all in the same boat. No, we're not. Oh, well, we're in a boat, all right, as Christians, but it's called the ark. It's the ark of safety. And God is going to ride his people through this storm. It may be difficult, the boat may shake, and there'll be storms and lightning and thunder. But God keeps his word. God has everything under control. And I ask you as a congregation of ministers and wives to stand to your feet.
and lift your hands and thank God for his faithfulness. He's going to see his church through. There's going to be a moving of the Spirit. God is going to bring those, he's going to awaken many, many multitudes. He's going to awaken those who have been cold and indifferent. He's going to pour his spirit out in the midst of all of this. Lift your hands. Stand, lift your hands. And thank God for his promises. And ask God to strengthen your faith. To give you a word so that you can stand before your family. You can stand before your friends. You can stand as David did. The whole army of 600 men rose up on one man's faith. Let that be you. God bless you.